Hello, everyone, and welcome to the All About DMATting webinar brought to you by Cherry Brook. I am your host, instructor, um, facilitator. I guess I don't really know what my title is for this, but I am the hostess with the mostest, Allison from Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, and we are going to give everyone about one more minute to hop onto this live, and then we will get started with our presentation. So you have reached the right place. This is the All About DMATting webinar uh, brought to you by Cherry Brook. And I am Allison and I am from Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. So just letting a few more people jump on to the live portion of this and then we will get started. All right. Um, Hello everyone and welcome. This is the Cherry Brook webinar all about dematting. I am your facilitator, Allison from Leading Edge Dog Show Academy and we are about to get started. So here we go. Um, all about dematting. My name is Allison Foley from Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. Of course, this webinar is brought to you for free by our friends at Cherry Brook Premium Pet Supplies, and we are going to talk about dematting. Um, a few notes about today's webinar. Of course, if you ask ten different question, ten different people the same question, you will get twenty different answers. What we talk about today is simply my opinion. I can back up my opinion by having groomed dogs and shown dogs all over the world professionally for more than 30 years. I have shown all breeds and I have taken great pride in how my dogs have gone into the ring. As well, I know a lot about tips, tricks, tools, and ways to demat your dog and that is what I will be sharing with you today. A few housekeeping notes in, in that this uh, webinar is being recorded and the recording will be emailed out to you. It takes 24 to 48 hours for us to get you this recording. Um, that's because Zoom takes a while to get us a recording. We have to make it pretty, send it out to you as well. Anytime during the webinar, please ask us a question using the Q&A function and not the chat function. So the Q&A function, the questions get lost, uh, or sorry, the Q&A function, we get to see the questions, the chat function, for some reason, the questions get lost. Please ask the question as soon as you think of it. They will not be answered until the end of the tutorial. And at that point, we will answer as many questions as we can during the one hour. If your question isn't answered, we do do another short video that will go up at some point in the same place that you're gonna find the recording for this webinar. So I hope that that made sense to you. And if at all, if at any time you see me taking a sip of tea or water, it's not because I'm trying to be rude, it is because I have to talk to you for an hour in front of the lights in the studio. And that requires a little bit of, you know, hydration. So there we go. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so here's what we're going to go over today. Uh, we're going to talk about the topic, the causes of matting, when should you demat your dog, um, common areas that dogs form mats in, and then some tools, techniques, and of course our Q&A. And what they didn't put on this agenda for you was that there is a special offer um, for all of those attending today's webinar. And we will share that with you right before and during the Q&A. So, um, mats. Mats occur when loose or shedding hair wraps around non-shedding hair and forms clumps. So, these clumps can be loose, they can, or where I say that they are getting kind of clumpy, or they can get really, really tight and be almost impossible to brush out. You have to shave them. So we are going to try to talk to you about ways that you can take care of your dog so your dog won't have to be shaved and you can do some of the dematting. So I like to think of matting, like a deciduous tree will lose all of its leaves at once. And if dogs did that, they would, that would maybe be useful. But what happens is dogs lose the leaves like that undercoat or the puppy coat because dogs um, 
lose their coats. Some breeds lose it seasonally, so they lose it in the spring before the summer, um, and some dog breeds lose it when the, the girls actually have a heat cycle. And often dogs will lose it after being under anesthetic, after a litter of puppies. And then a lot of our scissored coat type breeds, so your poodles, your bichons, your carry blue terriers, certain doodles, etc., they will lose their hair in what's called the puppy coat change between nine and 18 months. And these are all causes of matting. Then of course there is environmental matting, which comes from weather, from um, debris getting into the coat, either product build up, which isn't as common, but more like dirt, sticks, spear grass, things like that. Um, and weather, them getting wet and then not being dried properly. And then dogs that are just not brushed properly. So when dogs are brushed, but they're just brushed on the surface and not brushed all the way to the skin, they will look like they don't have mats, but they are actually often matted solid right at the skin. So if these mats are left on check, they can actually be like a felt. So it's actually gets felted together. And these tight mats can actually pull at your dog's skin and be painful, um, especially if your dog goes to lay down, um, sometimes when they're moving, and it can really restrict their moving and affect their health. So like I said, being in the snow or rain and living in a damp environment is really conducive to matting. I live on the west coast of Canada and right now we're heading into the rainy season and I have to be really careful with my dogs that they don't have a lot of matting. Also a uh, flat type collar, so those webbed collars, a harness, or if you'd like to dress up your dog in clothes, that can cause matting. So substances in the fur, like we talked about earlier, even unrinsed conditioner can cause matting. Um, just like I said, sticks, grass, burrs. And then some people think that they're doing a, their dog a favor because they're bathing the dog, but the dog isn't dried all the way to the skin. And when they're not dried all the way to the skin, this cause matting at the skin. And often you can even get hot spots underneath that mat. Um, and again, your poodles, bichons, um, when they go through that coat change, that is a huge cause of matting as well. So you have a dog and you think that it's matting. You've noticed those clumpy areas. Maybe you can feel the mat at the skin. When should you demat your dog? So this is basically um, the question that most people like are on one side of it or the other. Should you demat your dog before the bath or after the bath, i.e. while you are drying it. So for me, this is a personal preference. And a lot of people will say that they want to do it before the bath because when you hit the mat with water, it tightens up and then the mat's tighter and then it's harder to get out. So um, they say that the mats shrink and get tighter during the bath. I somewhat disagree with this. What I think happens during the bath is people hit it with water and then when they're bathing, they're moving their hand in a circular motion or back and forth and causing more friction because we know that friction does cause mats. Um, and that is why the mat is actually getting tighter in the bath. I personally think that hair is more elastic when it is wet. Um, and so therefore you're going to get less breakage. You're going to get more breakage when you're dematting dry and dirty hair, right? So I want to work on clean hair because mats often have dirt in them. So I like to um, put my dog into the tub and I like to break up the mats in the tub while they are wet because the hair is more elastic. Also, as I'm breaking up that mat and getting it clean, I can also be getting dematting products that are going to help me with the dematting process into the center of that mat. So when you are bathing a dog, if you decide to bathe your dog that is matted, you are not just shampooing them and moving the, sh the shampoo in a circular or it causing any kind of friction around those mats. You're putting them in and you're really pulling that mat apart as you're shampooing because you're letting the shampoo get in there. Shampoo is slippery by nature and that will help break apart the mat. And then, so the whole time you're in the mat, you're 
in the bath, you're using the technique, you're using your hands, which are your biggest tools. We're going to talk later about going from the largest tool to the smallest tool when we're dematting. Your hands are your biggest tool. You're going to keep pulling apart that mat and getting the shampoo in there to help you break up the mat. Then you're going to carefully rinse and be squeezing the shampoo out of that mat, not again rubbing in a circular or you know any kind of motion that's going to cause friction. Then you're going to add your dematting product, your conditioner. Maybe you're going to use the Cure Styling Milks. I'm ready to use and you're going to get again get that right into the mat in the bath right you can see it because the hair is wet um, you know it's easier to see these things when your dog is wet and you're really going to get that conditioner that dematting product right into that mat and keep breaking it up with your fingers then you're going to rinse your dog and then maybe at this point you want to put in some dematting product that's designed to be left in the coat this is the time that you're going to do that but when you're toweling your dog dry again you're not doing it in a circular motion not causing friction you're just putting the towel over your dog and squeezing so that you're not causing friction just squeezing the mat so that you're getting the excess water out but you're not causing more matting by how you are using the towel on your dog so I hope that makes sense. So common areas that your dog might mat um, are the areas where there's a lot of friction just by your dog's everyday life. Running, jumping, playing, and even being petted like we talked collars, harnesses, clothes can all cause matting. So the common, we call them hit areas that dogs mat are behind the ears. We all know that our dogs love to get these big mats behind the ears. A lot of, you know, dogs will scratch behind their ears. Um, their ears are flicking, so that causes some kind of friction. Um, it's often a place that we don't brush as well. The collar can be up there, all these reasons. Um, the front leg above where the front leg hits, so in front of the shoulder, so the front of the front leg, kind of where they move it up into the chest, you can get a big mat right in there. The flank area, um, fairly obvious the flank area because we're always twisting and turning at that flank and it's just dogs really do mat there. Um, around their private areas of course there you know is a little bit of urine droplets that can cause matting. The dogs are licking there that can cause matting. Armpits are usually a huge matted area. Again tons of friction in your dog's armpit. Um, your dog's entire butt can be matted if they're you know a big hairy dog because they're sitting in the wet grass or just sitting on carpet or sitting on in dirt and the dirt or even if it's not dirt like my dog goes to the beach sits in the sand and the sand gets into that hair and not all of it falls out right so it starts like creating their own little mats i wish they created pearls but they don't they create mats um the front of the knee or the stifle base of the tail from the tail wagging and a huge one where the collar or harness might sit if your dog does wear one all day and not just for its walk, as well if your dog wears sweaters, clothes, jackets, that can also cause matting. So lots and lots of areas that your dog can mat, right? Which is no wonder it's so common. And then when you add on top of that environmental things, like maybe not all the shampoo or conditioner was rinsed out, or maybe they got wet and they came in and like, let's face it, ideally every time your dog came, your coated dog came in from the rain, you're gonna dry it, but this is the real world and not everybody has time to dry it. And you might just dry it with a towel, which suits, you find for your dog coming into your house, I'm the same way. My dog comes in with wet feet. I have a towel by the door and I dry off her feet. Ideally, I should be blow drying her legs, right? But that in the real world, nobody really has time for that. Um, but, you know, if you do have a dog that is matting or going through coat change and you can't keep them dry when they're going out to use the potty or you're taking them for a walk, you know, try to figure out like when you can't, like I always make sure they have a big run in the rain before their bath so that they do stay as dry and as mat free for as long as possible. But, you know, realistically, none of us are drying our dog every time they come in from outside. I completely know that that's the real world. Okay, so some of my favorite tools for dematting are um, the ice slip pin brush. So the ice slip pin brush um, is especially designed for dematting. It has um, short, stubby, round pins that really get in there and really help break apart a mat. Now, I have tested this product. I know that it, it works great and it really helps pull apart the mat without hurting your dog's skin. It is 
really important when you are using any brush on your dog, especially when you're dematting, that if it's any kind of pin brush, like the Ice Slip or the Oval Breezy or the Big G Slicker, that the pins are round ground. You don't want cheaper brushes that have these pins that are just cut off at the factory. And it's basically like, you know, a cut line and they can be really jagged. Well, not jagged, but to, to the naked eye, but you know, it's just a piece of wire that's been cut. So Chris Christensen brushes, the each cut is also ground round, so it's not gonna scratch your dog. So if you pick up a brush and you run it down your arm and it scratches you, most likely it is going to scratch your dog as well. So the big G slicker, this tool has just come on the market a couple of years ago and it has just gone like wildfire. Um, tons of groomers love it for poodles and doodles. It's a great doodle dematter. This is a great dematting brush. So uh, for groomers out there, um, I used to be a huge fan of the Le Pooch for dematting, and this basically blows it out of the water. And I didn't say that until I tested it myself on a, de on a matted dog. And for people out there who aren't professional groomers, the big G slicker, if you own a poodle, a doodle, a bichon, any kind of dog that sheds and your groomer normally has to shave it down or you have to shave it down, please, please, please tr try the big G slicker. It comes in large, medium, and baby G. It is an amazing dematting tool and it is very gentle on your dog's skin. It doesn't look like it'll be gentle on your dog's skin, like if you're not used to slicker brushes because the pins are so long, but it's the fact that those pins are so long that they just, um, they have so much flex in them that they're just super gentle for your dog and they do not hurt your dog and they do, they really help you and save your fatigue on your arm when you're brushing out your dog, an amazing tool. So um, I so I always like to start with the biggest tool and then work down to the smallest. So the, the next two need to be switched around a little bit for me. So I'm gonna start with my hands breaking apart the mat. Then I'm gonna move on to the ice slip brush, the big G slicker. And once I have most of that mat out, I'm gonna move on to the oval breezy brush and just brush out that mat, right? So the breezy brush just helps you brush the matted area and the hair that is unmatted um, together, right? That's what that tool does. And then I'm going to use a metal comb and the 000 is a great example, but any metal comb would do. And the metal comb just really helps you check your work. You always want to check your work when you're dematting from the skin out. Because like we said earlier, if you've just brushed the top layer of your dog's coat, it might look dematted to you, but really they are matted at the skin. And that is a huge problem and something that, you know, even myself, um, really good friends of mine bought a legato and they thought they were doing a really good job and i went over and the dog was completely matted to the skin and she just showed me how she was brushing it and she wasn't using the right tools and once we got her the right tools and showed her like how to get down to the skin her dog never had to be shaved again so it's really about getting down to the to the skin when you want to keep your dog dematted so some other tools for dematting that can be really useful are the Mark II Slicker Brush, um, the Mark Tiny, and the Mark Triangle Slicker Brush. So slicker brushes are great dematting tools. I always use them after the ice slip brush. And I like the Tiny for smaller dogs, for behind the ears, for cats. It's a great dematter for cats. Um, the Mark II, the, plain, the small, um, is, Another dematting tool that I like for the bellies, the insides of legs. Um, for newer people, it, it's a good tool. It's not going to have the same dematting power as the Big G, but it does do a good job. The Mark V Triangle Brush, I love for dematting toes, right? So a lot of those coated breeds get these big mats in between their toes. They can be really difficult to get out, um, but the Mark V Triangle is an amazing tool for that. It is also good for very small dogs or people that have a lot of hand fatigue or people that are arthritic, I really try to get them to try the Mark V triangle. So it might be Mark V, Mark V triangle brush, but it is a great little dematting tool. So um, now we are onto some products that are good for dematting. So if you use these products like as a system, it is really helpful not only for getting the mats out, but also to prevent matting going forward, right? So that's what we want to do. We want to help you get the mats out of your dog and we want to help you keep your dog dematted um, 
and you know it's just like anything else it's like me sometimes working on my computer sometimes i will do something and it takes me an hour and a half because i don't have the right program and it will take somebody else to format something 10 minutes right so it's the same with these kind of products yes you can do it um, you know, I get lots of questions about, can we use cornstarch to demat your dog? Well, yes, you can, but it's going to take you a lot longer and your dog isn't going to stay dematted once you've used it, where these products are not only going to help you do it a lot quicker, they're going to help prevent matting from coming back. So I saw an iced tea tangling shampoo. Um, I'm going to use that in the tub on the mats and I'm going to put it straight on the mat. I'm going to suds it up again. I'm not using a circular motion. I'm not going back and forth. I'm squeezing it into the mat. So I'm putting the shampoo on straight, squeezing it into the mat, making sure it gets in there and rinsing it out really well. While it's in the mat, I'm also using the slipperiness, the soapiness, like we, you know, you use soap to get your ring that's stuck on off. Same with the mat. Let the soap get in there. Let the slipperiness get in there and help to break up the mat. In that manner, I want you to leave the shampoo on there for 10 minutes, right? Let the shampoo do its work. So many people, these products work and usually when they don't work, the failure comes from operator failure. So I'm telling you to leave the shampoo, especially in the mats for 10 minutes. And during those 10 minutes, just keep breaking those mats apart, letting the slipperiness of the shampoo get in there and help those hairs come apart. Then you're going to rinse it out. Then I want you to take the ice on ice detangling conditioner because this works as a system, right? They're all formulated to help get the tangles and the mats out. I want you to dilute the conditioner eight to one. So when we're diluting the conditioner, um, Chris Christensen products are really heavily concentrated, which is great for you because you get more bang for your buck. But on the other side of it, um, they can be more difficult to emulsify in water because they're not watered down already for you, right? So you might have used another conditioner in the past and it mixed really well with water. Well, most likely because it contained a lot of water itself. So my tip for you is dilute it eight to one. And then I use an immersion blender partly because I'm not much of a cook and I take my immersion blender and I just use it, you know, for like 30 seconds to really get that conditioner mixed in with the water as thoroughly as possible. Um, I also will use a shaker cup, right? Like your normal protein slim fast shaker cup with a little wire whisk ball in it. I have one that's just for my conditioner. If I'm on the road um, and I don't have my immersion blender with me, that's what I use. And what this does, this avoids it that when you put the conditioner on, you get mostly water than a clump of conditioner, than mostly water and a clump of conditioner because if you're doing it that way chances are the clump of conditioner is going to fall into the area of your dogs that's not matted because that's Murphy's Law where if you use an immersion blender um, or a protein cup it really really helps get the conditioner completely emulsified in the water and then it can go in there and it can do its job all over your dog. So once I have Put the conditioner in again i'm leaving it on for 10 minutes again i'm breaking up the mat with my fingers right that's what i'm doing i'm going to rinse it out and then once i've rinsed it out either in the tub or after the towel dry i'm going to use the ice on ice detangling and finishing spray and i'm just going to spray it right into that mat right that's when i'm getting that pinpoint precision getting that detangling spray right into that mat and it's again still breaking it up with my fingers um, then the next two products I'm going to, so the ice on ice ultra dematting spray and the cure brushing and styling milk, I'm going to use them slightly differently than those first three products. So those first three products are just like my go to if I have a dog that's, you know, matting starting to mat might be matted that's what I'm using. If I have a dog that is very, very matted like severely matted I don't know what I'm going to do or I've seen this kind of matting before and I've had a lot of problems with it in the past this is what I'm going to do I'm going to bath it in ice on ice shampoo like I just described I'm going to rinse it out then I'm going to take the cure brushing and styling milk and I'm going to apply it straight I'm going to so I'm going to shampoo I'm going to rinse I'm going to towel dry the dog by squeezing the water out not by rubbing I'm going to take the cure brushing and styling milk and I'm going to apply it directly into the mat so I'm going to saturate that mat because now we're talking a severely matted dog and I am then going to use the plastic bag method. So if you've been on one of the other webinars that I've done um, even my pre a previous Cherry Brook um, webinar, I described to you the plastic bag method. And I also have a YouTube video on this that you can go check out. So the cure brushing and styling milk and the plastic bag method, once I have the um, 
styling milk in that mat. I'm going to put my dog on a grooming table. I'm going to put a white like garbage bag over the matted area, obviously not on the head. Then I'm going to use a hot towel and I'm going to use a hot dryer and really just like it's a hot oil treatment with that dematting component in it. And you will be amazed at how much that helps break apart the mat. So once I've done that, I'm going to put them back in the tub. I'm going to rinse that out follow it up with some ice on ice conditioning spray, ice on ice finishing spray and get those mats out. So for a severely matted dog or a dog, I just know I cannot get the mats out of. That is a super helpful tip. So then the last product on this page, the ice on ice ultra dematting spray, that's what I'm going to use. I've bathed my dog. I've used all the tools that we had, you know, previously on this slide, the slip brush, the big G, the oval breezy. I've had all the mats out. I've checked it with the comb. Then when I'm checking it with the comb, I'm going to go through and any of the areas that my dog was really matted. So we talked about those hit areas, right? And your dog might be matted in all the areas, but your dog might only be matted in one or two. Maybe your dog doesn't sit down in the wet grass or the sand and it's just matted in its armpits or maybe the stage that your dog is going through. I'm going to use that ice on ice ultra dematting spray in those areas and really brush and comb it in there. And that's what's going to help the mats not come back as quickly that's what you're gonna do. And if in between baths, you have time to brush and comb your dog out, even if you don't have time to do the whole dog, you just wanna do those areas that were matted last time, use the Ice on Ice Ultra Dematting Spray. Spray it in there, brush it, and, and then check the brushing with the comb, right? So you're gonna brush it in there, but check to make sure that at the skin, you can still get the comb through. And that Ice on Ice Ultra Dematting Spray can really extend the time between baths. And that is really helpful because it's saving you time. So um, here's an example of like, this is a big hairy dog, right? And so when we are brushing it, we need to brush it all the way to the skin. So you can't just stand your dog up and brush over the top layer. You have to part the hair right at the skin. That's what that dotted line is showing. And then use your brush and just brush from the skin out to the end of the coat. And then you are going to check that with a comb. And there I am using um, a fusion brush and they used to have a rubber coating on them and now they don't. So just people always ask me what brush that is and it's just an older fusion. Um, so here is another good example that I will often use either like a knitting needle or a plastic tail comb or something to make sure that I am parting that right at the skin. So where this pink dotted line is, you can see my dog's skin there and that you need to see the skin to make sure that your dog isn't matted. And then you're always going to brush out from that skin to the end of the hair. And people always ask me like, how much hair do I take? take in each section when I'm checking, when I'm brushing, doing the, it's called line brushing. So I'm going to use one finger width, right? So one finger width is each section of hair that I would take with that knitting needle or that plastic tail comb and just make sure that that's a section of hair that I'm brushing and combing thoroughly to check that there's no more matting. Um, so again, whether you're using a slicker brush or a comb, so I like to take a section, then I'm gonna brush it. So the first thing I do is take a section, make sure I'm parted all the way to the skin with my knitting needle or my plastic comb. Then I'm gonna use the slicker brush on it and I'm holding the other hair on the leg out of my way and I'm brushing it with the slicker. Then I'm checking from the skin all the way to the end of the coat with my metal comb, right? So that is the basic steps. Um, to make sure that your dog is line brushed all the way to the skin. If you cannot see the skin, you have a mat and you have to keep going through it. So some different techniques um, that we can use when we're dematting um, is if your dog is standing on a grooming table and you're using a grooming arm and a, a grooming noose, you could tuck the ears into the noose to keep them out of your way. Um, and we just want to, when we're dematting, especially groomers, to keep that head nice and up and out of the way. So you don't want the dog to just keep turning around and getting in your way because it's just going to take you longer to get the, the job done. So you can take your dematting product, so your ice on ice detangling spray, and spray it right at the skin, like right around that mat and start breaking it up. So this is either on a dry mat or a wet mat, it would be the same process, right? Spraying that dematting product in there. You've already sprayed it in the tub, just add a little bit more when your dog's on the grooming table. And then I like to work 
um, the product in with my hand and I even like to hold the mat with the product with my hand and really let the heat of my hand help activate that product and really get it working and really get it in there. Um, so you can put your ice slip pin brush into the mat at the skin and kind of like work it back and forth to kind of work the mat away from the skin. And, but you're not putting the brush in at the mat and just ripping it to the end of the hair. You're just putting it in that mat and just gently rocking it to see if you can get movement in that mat away from the skin at all. Um, so at this point, your job is to make enough room between the skin and the mat that you can start brushing, right? Because you need to be able to see the skin. Um, no matter how careful we are, what tools or products we are using, dematting is never comfortable for your dog. So you are not just going in there and ripping it out using your muscle power to get it out there. You're using a technique, you're using the proper tools to gently work the mat away from the skin. Um, so once you've kind of worked it away with your eye slip brush, you're going to go right back and right where the mat is getting away from the skin, put the heel of the slicker in there and just rock. You're not using the whole slicker, you're just using the heel, so the big G, and just gently rocking that slicker and moving the mat away from the skin. Um, you're not going to put the slicker in there and just like scoop it. You're just like gently rocking the slicker because, um, if you just rip it right through your, it's going to be really painful for the dog and it's also going to be harder on you. I'm not as worried about you. I'm more worried about your dog, but um, so the, once you start getting that mat moving away from the skin, um, you're going to use your brush more like a piston, right? So you're just going to get in there and you're just going to work the brush back and forth, really moving that mat away from the skin. Um, you're going to be able to feel that mat moving away, right? You're going to be able to feel that it's, that the brush is going further and you're not gonna hear that. If you hear it, like if you can hear yourself brushing, that typically means that your dog is still matted, right? Um, so once you can't hear yourself brushing, that typically means you have the mat out. So now you're going to check that you have dematted your dog with the metal comb. So when we are dematting a face, um, this is really, really sensitive and a lot of people, um, even if they have their whole dog shaved down, they really don't want their dog's face shaved. So um, I thought I would include something about dematting the face. So obviously you're never gonna brush across the dog's eyes. Um, be sure to always have your hand over your dog's eyes, protecting them in case you slip, there's a loud noise, you jump, the dog jumps, etc. And you're always just using the heel of your brush. Um, so I like to start at the bottom. So like as far down as my dog has hair and kind of work up in again, little sections, not bigger than your finger. Um, you want to make sure that you keep the ear out of the way while you're doing the face because you don't want to get that ear hair tangled in with the face hair because it's more uncomfortable for the dog and then it's more confusing and you just have way too much hair. You're always working below the eye and brushing down. You're never working above the eye and brushing down. You're never working below the eye and brushing up. So you're always working below the eye and brushing down. And then if you are working on the top of the skull, you're just working from the eye towards the back of the dog. Um, you're going to uh, do it in the same way. You're going to use your bigger things, your ice slip brush, your slicker, working your way down to your comb, and you're just going to be using um, small areas. You're never really using the entire surface of the brush. You're using either the heel or the tip of your slicker or your brush, and you are going to check your work with a comb. But ideally, when we're dealing with the face, we want to get around the face safely, right? We don't want to upset our dog. There's lots of gums that you can pull away because they like to get matted along the lip line. You have to be super careful around the eyes. Um, and it's just a super sensitive area. So just really, really use your common sense, always brushing down away from the eye and from the top of the eye back towards the back of the dog. So here's a little face. So you know, this came in matted and then it was dematted, but we always worked from underneath the eye going down and from the top of the head going up. We did clean out this area with scissors um, and then checked everything with a comb. Okay, so ears, people seem to think that they can just treat ears just like any other part of the dog and you can't because that ear leather is really thin and really sensitive, right? And it is unfortunately human nature that we just 
brush the top layer of the hair on a dog's ears because of that ear leather, because it moves back and forth. So when dogs have very thick and voluminous ear hair, this leads to matting underneath that top layer and also unfortunately around the edges of your dog's ear. So I don't like to brush the ear from the bottom up or from the top down. I like to brush from side to side because I think that's the gentlest way to do it on your dog. So I'm going to gather all the ear hair in, that I can in my hand and use my finger and just have one little fingers worth of hair and I'm going to brush it um, away. I'm actually going to lay the ear on my hand so that the, my hand is the backstop for the ear. I don't want the side of my dog's face or neck to be the backstop for the ear. I'm using my hand. So if I can feel too much pressure on my hand, that is too much pressure for the ear leather. And this gives a good backstop and a good way for you to be brushing out the ear. Um, brushing the ear with no backboard, so not using your hand, does really nothing because the ear leather is flexing the whole time and basically you're just pushing the ear leather away from the brush and the brush isn't doing its job, the comb isn't doing its job. That's why you need a backdrop, a backstop and that's why it is not your dog's face or your dog's neck. And you're just gonna brush a little bit of hair at the time because the ear leather is so thin and so sensitive. So once you've brushed the whole top side of the ear, you're gonna flip the ear over to get to the hair on the underside of the ear. Um, if your dog is really matted, I often will shave the inside of the ear because you can't really see it. It helps loosen up the mats around the edge of the ear and just, you know, is nicer for the dog. Um, the very ends of the ear can get food and other debris in it. So again, you're going to use your hand on that very tip of the ear and brush this area getting those sticky bits out. Um, because you are brushing the ear from side to side and not up and down, you're going to be able to see when you have dematted hair and what hair is still matted, where if you're brushing up and down, the, unmat the unmatted hair is either covered by matted hair or the matted hair is covered by unmatted hair, one or the other, and you can't really see it. Whereas if you go side to side, you can definitely see what hair is still matted and you need to work on and what hair you can leave alone, therefore giving the ear leather a bit of a break. Okay, I just need a little sip of water. Um, using a dematting spray, so like the ice on ice uh, detangling spray is what I use when they're matted. Remember I use the ice on ice ultra when they are dematted to prevent matting from coming back as quickly. Um, just like be liberal with it. Don't be stingy, right? The bigger, more felted mats, you need to keep pulling that mat apart with the shampoo, with the conditioners, and just keep, as you pull it apart, add more product, right? Because you've saturated that mat, but as you pull it apart, you have other surfaces of the hair being exposed that were once curled in on top of each other, and you need to keep applying product to keep letting it be slippery so that it pulls apart easier. Um, pay attention to what is happening. If you get a looser piece where the mat is breaking apart, keep going to that part and get it broken apart as much as possible. Always brush from the skin out, just like you are drying from the skin out. Um, if you're using the ice slip pin brush, start at a bottom point, lift the hair up and drop a little bit of hair down again to be dematted. So you're not going over the same point again and again and again. Um, and once you've gone through it with the eye slip brush, go through it again with the big G. And it's always easier to do a little bit of coat at a time as opposed to doing a lot of coat at a time. So this is why we show this diagram where we are holding this hair. So the hair over here in the left picture, um, this hair is hair that has not been brushed out yet. This hair, it's not matted in this photo, but this would be the matted hair that you're holding back. And I am brushing all of this coat. I'm brushing it from the skin out a little tiny bit at a time. And once I have that so that the, the slicker is going through it, then I'm checking it with a comb. Then I'm releasing a little bit more hair. Um, and I might part it all the way down to the skin with this comb and then start the whole process over again. But that's the only way to ensure that your dog is not matted at the skin. And you have to go through it with the comb. You have to go a little bit at a time. If you try to do a big, huge section at once, it is just so hard on your body, but just 
but the worst part is it's so hard on your dog and your dog's skin. So a lot of um, reasons why groomers won't demat a heavily matted dog is just look like this is a, an example of a dog that was severely matted and the groomers try, you know, the owner wanted it brushed out. Um, the groomer tried, but it was too painful. The matting was too severe. So they simply shaved it all off. And this is what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to teach you how to get all the way to the skin so that this never happens to you. Um, so the feet. So one of the reasons we talked about that little triangle slicker is do not neglect the hair between the toes and the webbing of the feet because that webbing basically acts like a stone. You know, once that mat gets in between there, that mat acts like a rock. So imagine having a rock in your shoe. Now imagine having five rocks in your shoe because you have a mat between each toe and underneath that big pet. Imagine how uncomfortable that is for your dog all the time. So to efficiently groom between the toes, you're gonna to hold the foot up and you're gonna use your thumb to kind of push the webbing up and pop that little round stone, the little, cause usually the mats between the toes are quite round. You're gonna push that up and then use that triangle slicker because it, you know, the tip of that slicker just works perfectly to get that mat out. Um, and you still have to check that it is all out with your comb right? Because a little tiny bit of dirt and debris, the mats between those toes just happen so quickly. If once you have it all dematted and you can cut some of that coat shorter between the toes, by all means, go ahead and do it. Um, remember that just like ears, um, a lot of dogs do not like to have their feet brushed. Also, typically their feet, if they have those little round mats between the toes are really, really tender. Like they, you know, imagine walking all day with a rock in your shoe, how tender your foot would be in that spot that the rock was in. And this is basically the same thing that has been happening to your dog, right? It has been walking around with a stone in its shoe. Um, so now we're gonna talk about how to maintain your dog, um, using a dryer, things that are going to help you keep your dog dematted and get your dog dematted. So a general rule about dematting, if you look at your dog and you think it needs a bath, it does, right? So if you look at your dog and you think, oh, its hair is starting to look clumpy, it's kind of like the tip of the iceberg. It's probably more matted than you think it is. And I, this happens to me too. I'll look at Ellie Mae one day and I'll think, oh, she looks a little bit clumpy. And then the next day it's like, oh, she's matted. Like I should have bathed her yesterday, right? So I bath and dry my dogs weekly. But if my dogs are going through a coat change, I own breeds that go through a puppy coat change, they benefit from being bathed twice a week. I also used to show a lot of double coated breeds, so a lot of Samoyed, Siberian Huskies, Newfies, and if they were going, Shetland Sheepdogs, if they were going through a coat change, which also causes matting, so a seasonal coat change, I would bath them twice a week. You want that dead hair out of there as quickly as possible. The sooner that dead hair is out of there, it's not going to cause matting, and that new good hair that's not shedding, that's not going to fall out, can come back in. So if you're bathing your dog once or twice a week and in between the bath you have time by all and you or you notice your dog is getting clumpy and you don't have time to give it a full bath put your dog on the table use your dryer on cool so typically for matting we tr we want to use like either the dews dryer or a stand dryer or a hand dryer not typically a high velocity to get the matting out and we're going to put that dryer on medium or cool and we're going to because the dryer pushes all the hair away and you can actually see where the mat is so then i'm just going to use my ice slip brush and my ice on ice ultra spray it and just brush out with that cool dryer getting that clumpiness out before it can be a really hard tight mat um, brushing with the dryer helps you you can just run the dryer you know instead of brushing through all the coat you can kind of run the dryer through the coat and the dryer will go all the way to the skin all the way to the skin all the way to the skin then all of a sudden it's not all of a sudden you can't see the skin that is a clump that is a mat or a clump or something that needs attention you stop the dryer there keep it on warm or cool depending on the weather outside and your dog and you just start dematting that spot the dryer pushes away some of that dead coat so it's not 
getting in your brushes quickly. It's just such a great tool to go through um, a dog in between baths with your dryer on cool. You will thank me. That shedding hair just comes out and just really, really hit them with that dematting spray, right? Um, you, regardless of whether you're using a dematting spray or some other spray, you never want to brush dry hair, right? You're always going to brush your dog with some kind of brushing spray. Brushing um, dry hair is another cause of matting because you're creating static and the static in the hair actually causes like little lumps, bumps, clumps that eventually turn into mats. So another reason why we always use a brush out spray, even if it's just some conditioner diluted in water, um, that's great. If you can use some ice on ice detangling spray or some ice on ice ultra, that is just going to help you that much more. All right, so excuse me, we do have people out there, uh, myself included, that we really need to have our dogs demanded, but we're trying to save as much coat as possible. So these are typically dogs going through a puppy change, um, also could be those double coated breeds, right? So that's why I'm saying, um, if you really want to save the coat, you're really going to work with your biggest tool and work your way down to the smallest. There is no doubt that you could just take a comb and just demat your dog. It's going to be really, really hard on your dog's skin. It's going to be hard on you and you're going to lose the most coat. That's why we start with our biggest tool, our hands, the ice slip brush, um, working our way to a pin brush, a big G, and then a comb. Um, you want to use a pin brush that has a medium or firm firmness. So the breezy brush green or the breezy brush red would be great because they're me the green is the medium firmness, the red is the firm firmness. So you need that firmness of the pad to help you break the mat apart and get that matted hair out of there. If you want to use the lilac brush once your dog's dematted to save coat, by all means, that's what I do, but I use the green or the red for the dematting process. You are always going to check that the mat is gone with a comb. It is imperative that you do that. Um, and then we want to make sure that we are cleaning our brushes, right? We're getting all that dead hair, et cetera, out of our brushes. Um, so with a slicker brush, you can gently roll that slicker brush on a grooming table um, from the top to the bottom. And it's not only going to like push that hair out, but it's also going to reseat the pins, make sure all the pins are going in the perfect direction on your slicker brush. Um, you want to empty all that dead hair out of your brush every couple minutes or so, so that you have maximum penetration with the brush. Um, you can use a matte comb um, on your dog, but you are going to lose more coat, right? That's why we haven't really talked about those today. Um, and you always are going to like make sure that your brushes and your tools are clean and ready to go. Always, always, always when dematting your dog, have your dog's welfare in mind. Like this is one, you know, I hear so many people that might get upset with groomers because their dog had to be shaved, but really your groomer doesn't want to shave your dog. Your groomer is shaving your dog because they know how painful it is going to be to demat that dog. So that's why we're doing this webinar today to give you the tools, to give you the techniques that you can use either at home if you're an at-home groomer or even what you can do in between groomings so that your dog doesn't have to be shaved down when it gets to the groomer. And I think that this is really timely, like especially in times of COVID where a lot of groomers have been shut down. Now that they're overbooked and understaffed, it's harder to get your dog in there. Some people, their income has changed. So um, some people are at working from home, so they have time to groom their dog, right? So we are trying to give you all these tips, tricks, tools, techniques, so that you can keep your dog dematted at home. All right, so now we are going to get down to some of the deals that they have worked out for you. Um, so you spend $75 on any Chris Christensen products. So not just the products that we've, we've talked about today, but any of them, um, you can get the brush cleaning kit free. So we've talked about how important it is to keep our brushes clean, magic foam and the brush cleaning brush. Um, this is a $75 value. And if you buy um, $75 worth of Chris Christmas products, you're going to get this for free. Use the code 75 brush at checkout. Also, they have a bag deal and um, 
you can get the big G slicker, which is my favorite dematting tool. It's a great, or the big K, which is a similar brush, just has slightly fewer pins, free with shampoo and conditioner. So um, this is, you do not need a coupon for this deal, but ask them for the bag deal with the big G or the big K and they will get it to you. Um, we are going to go to our live Q&A now and I will leave up the Cherry Brook offer. I'm just going to quickly say that um, if you don't know, I'm Allison from Leading Edge Dog Show Academy and I have a complete online dog show school. Um, I have grooming courses for Newfies, Bichons, Carrie Blue Terriers, Poodles, Setters, Beagles, Spaniels, Asian Fusion, um, we have a lot of great grooming courses. We have dog show handling courses. We have training courses. We have the winter school circle full school subscription where you can get everything we have in our entire school. And I invite you to head over to Leading Edge Dog Show Academy and check out all of our great courses. Um, so for now, we are going to go back to our offer from Cherry Brook, which is right here. So you can take a look at it while we go to our live Q&A. Um, so we are going to answer your questions that came in live. If you haven't sent in a question, please feel free to do so now. And here we go. Oops. Um, Helen asks, what are the best brushes for Havanese? Um, okay, so I like the big G in baby, so it's technically called the baby G, and the oblong 22 millimeter breezy brush in the lightest firmness, which is the lilac pad. Um, I would also use a metal comb, but those would be the two brushes I went for. If you wanted to use the little triangle, the Mark V slicker, uh, the Mark V, Mark V, um, please go ahead and use that. That's great for the toes, but um, I've shown a lot of Havanese and the Breezy Brush 22 millimeter oblong in the lilac, which is the softest firmness. Um, Bunny, I came in a few minutes late. Do you have a towel preference for either terry cloth or microfiber? Bunny, I've always used terry cloth. Um, I've had a few microfiber towels sent to me that I have used. Um, personally, I find they don't do what they say that they're going to do personally. Um, and also I find them harder to wash and dry. They pick up all kinds of other hair when I wash them and dry them, which I think makes them lose their effectiveness. So I've always just been a terry towel kind of girl. Um, Nishi asks, I love your name, Nishi. Nishi asks, I use a G slicker on my, uh, my Polish, my pawn, but I'm always concerned if it's pulling off their undercoat. Pawns cannot be scissored and undercoat is important. Um, I don't think that if you use it properly that it's going to pull out the undercoat. You are always welcome to send me a photo of the undercoat and how you're using it. Um, this might be a time that using it with the dryer on cool would be helpful because the dryer will help push the coat away and you can really get down to the skin. Um, I don't think it would be pulling out the undercoat unless it's hitting mats. Um, Alma asks, can you review the top choices for Tibetan Terriers? I have three with completely different types of coats. Yeah, doesn't that always happen? I am officially no longer a groomer. I need to make sure I'm doing a thorough job. They have never been shaved or cut. Um, so Alma, I'm going to assume that you're asking for brushes and not product. So I am going to use the big G in medium. I am going to use the, uh, the, the oval breezy brush, um, 22 millimeter pin in lilac, the softest firmness. I am going to use the ice on ice ultra dematting spray for brushing them out. Um, again, a comb to check your work. Um, if you're asking for shampoo, I would probably use day-to-day -day shampoo and conditioner. It's a little bit more moisturizing, gets that really good drape with your Tibetan. Um, also silk spirits, put a little bit of silk spirits in your hand, takes away the frizziness, will help any dry ends. Can also help with matting if you get that into those hit areas as well. Uh, Teresa asks, um, do the products list the ingredients? I've come across many that do not. No, Teresa, the products um, do not list the ingredients. If you do send an email to Chris Christensen, they, Chris Christensen Systems, they will get you a list of ingredients. And I know this because I get this question quite often. 
Uh, Lynn asked, do you recommend using any type of brush in the tub while trying to demat or are your fingers the only tools you use? Great question, Lynn. I use my fingers and the ice slip brush because those really chubby pins really get into that mat. Um, Michelle Scott asks, what are your thoughts on recirculating bathing systems? Um, I understand why a lot of people use the recirculating bathing systems. To me, I again had one didn't really like it. It did save a lot of money on product, but I just find like, I never really knew what I was recirculating. I never really felt that they were completely rinsed and it just didn't work for me. Um, also, I have, I think it works better for people with a lot of double coated breeds and I didn't have a ton of double coated breeds. Um, and I just like more control over where I'm putting shampoo and conditioner, like, like it thicker, more concentrated in some areas. And you know, if you're using a recirculating bathing system, it's like a one, it's a one shot deal for every part of the dog, right? Where I like to be more personal about it, like more conditioner in the ears, more in the head and neck, less in other areas of the dog. So it wasn't for me. Um, Nishi asked, can you use ice ultra spray on dirty dogs in between baths? Yes, you can. So um, I, I would use the ice on ice detangling on a dog that I thought was a little bit dirty as compared to the ice on ice ultra. Um, because I don't want, you know, the ice on ice detangling is actually going to repel a little bit of dirt. So I think that's a better choice. Deborah asks, if you don't need to bathe a dog and you're dematting on dry skin, like my dog's back legs are matted, should you try to wet the legs with water first before applying ice and ice spray or just do it on the dry skin? If you're not bathing the dog, um, I wouldn't add water because that's going to dilute the product. I would just put the ice on ice detangling spray right in there. And in this case, I would use the detangling spray and not the ultra. Um, Kendra asks, why do you start at the skin level instead of starting at the ends and working towards the skin? Well, I'm breaking up the mat. So when I'm using my fingers, I'm kind of like starting at the outer edge of the mat and working towards the skin. I kind of look for the weakest area of the mat and working it out. When we're starting at the skin is when you're trying to like get a bigger mat worked away. We're talking when we're start, starting at the skin, really, really tightly matted dogs, where if you started at the end of the mat, you are affecting the skin, which is why we're moving the mat away from the skin first. Gabrielle asks, do you recommend brushing a long haired dog, Polish Lola and Sheepdog before or after the bath? I do it during the bath and after. I do all of my dematting during and after, unless it's some kind of weird situation where I might not do that. Susan says, how do you go about dematting a very skittish old English sheepdog? Um, well, I would make them more comfortable with grooming. I would probably get them pretty tired, right? So any dog that is either really rambunctious or really skittish, try to get them tired before you start groom grooming them because you don't want them to have more energy than you do. So make sure that they've played, eaten their dinner, and they're like starting to relax and then start grooming on them. And just have it in your head that you're going to do a small section at a time, right? If you have it in your head, you're going to do like the whole dog or half the dog, that might be a little bit too ambitious. And then it's just going to be a war of wills. So you're not going to enjoy it and the dog isn't. So just do a little area and really praise your dog, talk to them, be giving them treats the whole time. So it becomes more enjoyable. Oh, best brushes. Patricia asks, best brushes for Shelties, especially those ears. Oh, I've had many Shelties. Um, so around the ears and behind the ears, I'm probably going to use the Mark II slicker and also lots of ice on ice spray because that's a super tender area and they just get those, doesn't that really cottony hair just get those super balled up mats behind the ears. So try the Mark II, but really, really soak it in ice on ice detangling and break it up. Um, Heather asks, in your experience, do burner doodles get badly matted? Yes, extremely badly matted because they kind of have two different hair types going on at once. The big G slicker will be your friend. Um, and you know, if your dog has to be shaved because it's so matted, then just start at the beginning again. Start keeping them dematted from about three weeks after they've been shaved onwards. Whitney asks, what do you think about the CC wood pin brush compared to the other brushes you mentioned? Well, I personally love the, the wooden pin brush, um, but it's not a dematting tool at all, 
It is not. It is great for older dogs. It is great for certain coarse coat types, Sky Terriers, Briards, some bearded Collies, some Tibetan Terriers for that person that asked the question earlier with that really coarse coat that you're afraid of breaking. I love the wood pin brush. I love it on puppies. I love it on old dogs. I love it with dogs with skin issues, but it is not a dematting tool. So as long as you're not using it for dematting, you're using it as a specialty brush for certain things, great tool. I have a Janine, uh, Jean asks, I have a generously coated English Springer Spaniel who swims daily, I'm assuming that says, how can I help this coat? Um, so when he swims, maybe you have time to rinse him out and then add the ice on ice detangling spray and just quickly brush it through. You could even brush it through with the aforementioned wooden pin brush just to really stop the mats from happening, right? So if after he has a swim, you could rinse out either the pond water or the pool water and then put some detangling spray and brush it through, that will help you out. Sandra asks, can I ask about some combs that aren't mentioned? Of course you can. The coarse poodle style butter comb versus a staggered tooth butter comb. Are either of these needed in addition to this? I already use the ice slip daily, but my dog will go through the coat change soon and that worries me, so I want to be prepared. Do I need these at all if I'm using the Fusion and Oval Breezy and a butter comb? So Sandra, if you have a Fusion and the Oval Breezy and a butter comb, you are fine for dematting, right? For the coat change. The poodle comb is for later in your poodle's career when you're fluffing it up to be scissored and for top knots as well the staggered tooth butter comb which is the Jill the 507 my personal favorite comb of all time I use it for combing out for poodles for combing for scissoring for getting that really really perfect look um, it is an amazing amazing comb but you do not need it for coat change. You could also check out Poodle University on Leading Edge Dog Show Academy and it just has tools, tips, tricks for all stages of your poodle's life. So for going through coat change, for any of the trims, et cetera, et cetera, full product lists, you can also send me an email. Barbara asks, what are the best brushes to use on Briards? Well, depending on your Briards coat type, you could use a wooden pin brush. Um, if I'm using a breezy brush, I'm gonna use the green medium pad. I'm gonna use the oval shape and the 22 millimeter pin. Or if you like a slightly longer pin, I would use a Fusion with the 27 millimeter pin and a big G slicker because I use the big G on everything. Um, Beth asks, best brush for Maltese, please to get to the skin for daily use. Um, Maltese, I'm gonna use the oblong breezy 22 millimeter pin in lilac, which is the softest pin pad. If I was looking for a slicker, I would either use the Mark X, the 10 tiny or um, the Mark II. Phyllis asks, uh, the big G or big K for Portuguese water dogs, big G all the way. Big G is your friend, you will love it for porties. And the triangle for the feet is perfect for getting between those toes. Um, so we are at 302. So that is all of our time for today. I understand that we have a lot more questions to answer. So what we are going to do is we will do another short video for everybody else that sent us questions. And when you'll get the recording of this webinar sent to you, and then you will also get a link to the second recording that has the answers to all of these questions. So sorry that there wasn't enough time to answer them all today, but we are already slightly over time. So uh, for one more time, uh, my name is Allison from Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. You can find me at leadingedgedogshowacademy.com. I'm happy to help answer any questions. You can check out any of my courses. Um, and of course, don't forget about our special offers from Cherry Brook. I mean, that big G deal, I think is just an amazing deal because that's basically the price um, of the big G or the big K. So you're getting a free shampoo and conditioner. Who doesn't like that? Um, the brush cleaning deal, if you're ordering products anyway, put in the code to get the free brush cleaning deal. Keep your stuff in top knot shape. Also, that magic foam that comes with the brush deal is great for spot cleaning your dog. If it pukes on itself, has a little accident, it is a great spot cleaner. So it has more than one use. Um, here we go. So 
the world is kind of a crazy place. And one of the ways that we can all get together is through the magic of webinars like this. If you would like to see more webinars, please talk to customer service at Cherry Brook. Tell them that you would like to see more. Please write to me. Tell me what kind of webinars you would like to see. Um, at Leading Edge, we have a lot of webinars out there for you to see, including some of the other ones brought to you by Cherry Brook. So a huge, huge thank you to Cherry Brook for sponsoring this webinar for free for everyone. Please, over the next 24 to 48 hours, look for the recording of this webinar. If you don't find it in your inbox, please check your spam or promotions folder because somehow email has gotten smarter than us and knows that this is a promotion and how to get it in there. I don't ask me how. Anyway, the world is a crazy place and I want you and your families to stay safe out there. And I want to thank you so much for spending this one hour and five minutes with me today talking about how to keep our dogs dematted happy and healthy. Thank you all and have a great day.